Today, I'll be talking about the legalization of physician-assisted suicide in America. For some people, talking about death can be a very scary thing, especially when the topic of someone ending their own life is brought up into conversation. However, death can be a desirable alternative to living in sufferings from a terminal illness. Euthanasia and physician-assisted suicide has been a topic of debate for many years. The right to choose death in this way is currently illegal in most countries, including the United States of America. There are, however, only a few states in America that have this legalized, but it's still hard to obtain the prescription in these states. The Death with Dignity Act and campaign support the legalization of physician-assisted suicide, and they have been able to make it legal in many places around the world, but still not everywhere. I believe it is only right for people who are terminally ill with six months or less to live to choose whether they live with their terminal illness or to choose to end their suffering through medicine. The medicines used for physician-assisted suicide are commonly known as barbiturates. They cause the brain activity and the nervous system activity to slow down. Barbiturates are sometimes used to help insomnia or seizures, but there are other types that can be used alone for physician-assisted suicide. So an example of somebody wanting to receive physician-assisted suicide for, say, if somebody has a brain tumor. This doctor will tell them that this brain tumor will be inoperable or it will soon take their life. So the reason why this person um, would consider physician-assisted suicide is because by the time that the cancer takes over their body, they won't be able to take care of themselves, they won't be able to feed themselves, they just can't be themselves with dignity allows options for terminally ill patients. People would rather have this option, which is why I feel like this should be legalized. Some people don't understand how they feel about physician-assisted suicide until they feel themselves suffering or they see somebody around them suffering. I read an article about a doctor who did not support it um, until he saw his father suffering through cancer. And once he passed away, he realized that this should be an option for people to have. I'm sure many people have lost somebody special in their life from cancer. I lost my dad in 2018 from cancer. In 2010, he was diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis disease. So basically, his lung tissues were scarring up um, and he couldn't take in any oxygen. On July 11th of 2012, I thought I was going to lose my dad. Luckily, he was able to receive a double lung transplant and got new lungs. Um, after his transplant, he developed lymphoma cancer. He had just beaten one battle and now was hit with another. Luckily, the doctors were able to quickly attack and get rid of it. Since my dad did have somebody else's organs in his body, he had to take an anti-rejection medicine, which ultimately lowers your immune system. So more cancer ended up developing in his body since his body could not fight it off and chemotherapy would not help. It just wasn't an option because he was just so weak. Not only was he ultimately suffering, but it was an emotional difficulty for him and for our family to see him like this. If he would have known about this option of physician-assisted suicide, and if it would have been legalized in America, he would have been told about it, he would have most likely gone with it. He spent many, many years suffering with cancer and lots of pain, and I just feel like if this was legalized, he would have explored the option and learned about it and would have taken it. I'm not saying I wanted to see my father die. The reason why I mention this is that people who are against physician-assisted suicide believe that people who are for it think life is a complete waste. That is wrong. I do not think life is a complete waste. My dad did suffer for the last eight years of his life, and the last year of his life was completely and utterly brutal. It was heartbreaking. He was going to pass away regardless, but some of the suffering could have ended earlier if physician-assisted suicide was legal in the United States. So I encourage, if you feel for this topic or believe that physician-assisted suicide should be legalized, that you should follow these two steps. There may be more than two steps, but they're easy. They're very easy. One way is to contact your federal lawmaker and let them know how much you deeply care about physician-assisted suicide and its legalization throughout the nation. Tell them why physician-assisted suicide is important to you and the people of America to be able to obtain um, if that time comes. This will remind them of the topic and keep it on their mind to further address in the near future. 
The second way is go public with your opinion about death with dignity. Let your voice be heard about the topic on social media or writing to a local newspaper to spark a discussion. There are so many options for someone to help make physician-assisted suicide legalized. There will always be people who don't support it or do anything they can to prevent it from being made into a law. But if you continue to let your voice be heard and encourage others to support this right, you can really help make a change for the legalization of physician-assisted suicide in your state and around the United States of America.